Welcome to CSN Fights, and I'm Andre Ward, and I'm joined right now by two MMA Bay Area legends, Gilbert Melendez and the one and only Nate Diaz. Fellas, I appreciate you coming in and, and stopping by. Uh, Gilbert, to start with you. You obviously have a, a gym here in San Francisco. Uh, how's the family, and, and what's next for you? Yeah, I, I do have a gym here in San Francisco. It's going on on seven years. I'm on 29th, 23rd Street for any Bay Area people that want to come out there. And uh, yeah, we you know we do all the martial arts. We do a lot of kickboxing, you know, jujitsu, wrestling, MMA. Yeah. We got some good up and coming fighters. Got my wife out there. She fights for Bellator now. She's yeah. doing it. And uh, so you know we're keeping it within the family. So it's it's good. It's good. So just a quick quick question. Yeah. Your wife. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Obviously, she has a Muay Thai background. I, I've seen her fight, bro. She's got. Obviously, she can kick, but she's got good hands. All right. I really appreciate her hands. Yeah. How do you handle your wife getting in there and competing? You know, it's getting a little more difficult as, as the talent moves up, and she's kind of on the big stage now, you know, and, um, you know, she's been dominating for a little bit. So, you know, now that the level's going up, it's, it's, it gets a little rough checking her out. But, um, but she does great. She does great. I'm confident in her skill, and, you know, she's been doing her jiu-jitsu, and yeah. I think MMA might be for her, you know, so it's cool. Do you train her? I, I train her in the grappling MMA, but, you know, like, it's tough when it comes to the striking, yeah. you know. She starts, we start getting into it. You know, it's, sometimes it's not of good course. for the It's couples therapy at times, and sometimes it's bad, you know. <laughs> it's cool, though. Nah, that, that's good stuff, bro. Yeah. Uh, Nate, what's up, man? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about, about the boxing license. You obviously just got your license not too long ago, you know, in California. A lot of people want to know, is that real? What, what's the latest with that? Well, the thing was, uh, I was in some uh, negotiation issues with the UFC, and I, I was talking to some boxing promotions and stuff, and uh, I talked to the UFC about it, and they were not having it at all. So recently they got the Connor thing with uh, Floyd Mayweather, and that's going viral. So <clears throat> I said, hold on, this is the same thing I just tried to do years ago, and you got to gung-ho <laughs> about it with him, but you got to never let me. So I'm like, well, if he's got his boxing license, I don't even want nothing to do with that fight, but I want, I'm going to get mine too and get in on that, yeah. you know? And uh, if they're not going to let me in on it, then I think it'll show. Yeah. What I've been saying that they've been holding, the UFC been holding back on promoting me, and they're just pushing him and handing him everything. Yeah. So yeah. I was just going to sit. I'm just keeping my options open, you yeah. know. But you would be willing to fight. I'm willing to fight. Professionally, if something opened up, that either, made sense. Either one. Like, I've been sparring in the, uh, with top-ranked boxers for a lot of years, and yeah. just like I've been training with mixed uh, top-ranked martial artists for a lot of years, so I'm open to... Uh, to <laughs> Keep, keep fighting in martial arts or going into boxing also. Obviously, you guys have come up together. The scrap pack. Scrap? Scrap pack, yeah. yeah. Scrap pack. Yeah, there you go. Some people have said that may be the tightest group of guys in the MMA. Through the ups and downs, you guys stick together. You guys obviously help each other. You know, in the fight game, you guys help each other improve. Uh, how did that come about, and how have you guys stayed so close knit? Yeah, man. You know, um, you know, it all started. You know, Caesar Gracie fight team. You know, mm -hmm. we always represent the Gracie fighter out there, and um, you know, and it's it's. Uh, I think we're pretty authentic. You know, we all started as white belts together. Well, I think Nate was Nick was a blue belt, and maybe Jake was a blue belt at the time. But you know, we're grassroots. You know, you talk about other Bay Area teams or whatever. You know, we we are authentic. We don't we haven't really recruited like some people have came over. You know, but you know, we started together and. Uh, and we've, we've grown together, you know, and no egos in the gym, and um, we just, you know, we're, we uh, complement each other, our styles, you know, so it's, it's, it's helped elevate our, our skill. Nate, what have you seen just, you know, watching Gilbert grow as a fighter and as a man, and, and you can jump in too, how, how's it been watching you guys just, you know, evolve like that? Yeah, it's good. I got uh, Nick, Jake, and Gil, and they're all just a little bit older than me, so I just kind of watch and follow the path of these guys, you know, they're like my big brothers, I just kind of did what they did. Learn from learn from the good things they did. Learn from their mistakes, and yeah. I think vice versa. I think we'll pick up off each other's uh, mistakes and and good things. And uh, I think that uh, we all can't, like I, he said, we complement each other, you know, and uh, we run off each other's momentum. So I think it's good. Yeah, and just like you said in, in, in training, you know, like we, you know, we complement each other, but we also complement each other just in like in life, you know, we learn off each other and, uh, you know, you know, we were all doing a different path than Nate, but, you know, now, you know, Nate's the man now, dude, he's took everything from everyone, he's took it to another level, so, of you know, now he's, you know, he's a black belt in, in the business as well now with this, so we're all learning from each other and, uh, and we stick together and we, we get to elevate our yeah. stock together, you know, yeah. we're here with you together, you know, it's just, yeah. it's cool. I love it, bro. It's, it's a beautiful thing to see, man. More from you guys in a little bit. Let's talk a little UFC 209. Undefeated lightweight Khabib Nurmagomedov was hospitalized last week after suffering complications during his weight cut. Doctors would not medically clear him to fight, and his interim title belt with Tony Ferguson was called off. 
a shocking setback for the Eagle, who fights out of San Jose. For more, let's send it over to Fallon Smith. What's going on, Andre? Yeah, there's no question about it. UFC 209 fell short of expectations because Khabib was not on the card. Now, Tyrone Woodley, he defended his welterweight crown in a dull five-round decision win over Stephen Thompson. But for a pair of Sacramento-based fighters, it was certainly a night to remember. Yes, Cynthia Calvillo won her UFC debut against Amanda Bobby Cooper. The Team Alpha Male product scored a first-round submission win with a rear naked choke. And in the prelims, perhaps the most remarkable MMA comeback in years. Darren Alkins took a lopsided beating for two rounds before scoring a dramatic knockout victory in the third and final round. It was awesome. From the cage to the squared circle, Keith Thurman taking on Danny Garcia in a welterweight title unification bout on national television. One time dominated the early rounds, but then took his foot off the gas, allowing Garcia back into the fight. In the end, Thurman was awarded a split decision victory. Garcia says he wants a rematch. Here's a look at the upcoming NorCal fight schedule. Coming up this Friday, San Jose's Andy Vences defends his title against Angel Hernandez. And then on April 8th, the American Kickboxing Academy product Daniel Cormier defends his light heavyweight crown in a rematch against Anthony Johnson at UFC 209. Now, Cormier won their first meeting via submission. That's it for me, Andre. Back to you. I'll talk a little bit about rematches. Uh, I potentially have a, a, a mega rematch on the horizon. We'll see how that goes. Uh, obviously, you both have had rematches before, and you were part of a tremendous uh, trilogy, you know. First of all, tell us what that trilogy was like. What did it feel like getting in the ring with a guy that you obviously knew intimately in that ring? He knew you. How did you approach the, the second and third fight? Yeah, you, you know, you learn from your mistakes, as they say, you know, and, and the person the rematch who learns from his mistakes the most can be most effective. And uh, I lost my first match with Josh Thompson. He did everything right, so I had the most to, to improvise on or to, to correct. And it was a great feeling, you know, coming back my second fight and beating him. And, and then the third one was actually really competitive. You know, he brought back something to the table. I did a lot of things right. He had some tricks, so, yeah. but I, I was able to, you know, squeak it out and, you know, I also made my, uh, my adjustments as well. But I enjoy rematches. You know, most of my rematches I've been successful with. A couple guys that beat me, I avenged a couple losses. Two for two? Yeah, two for two, that's correct. You obviously had a tremendous rematch against, against McGregor. Talk a little bit about the business side. Mm. You win the first one. Not a lot of people thought you were gonna win. So when you come to the table with the UFC, What's the approach? How do you get the upper hand leading into the rematch? As far as business goes, yeah, what they want, they needed the rematch to happen. I didn't need that rematch <laughs> to happen. So, uh, of course. And I went into it knowing, too, if I didn't win uh, by finish or something, that, that they were going to put, put it his way. So, uh, yep. so that, that made me even stronger in the negotiation to have, like, you guys ain't going to give me nothing, yeah. so you're going to have to give me something. Yeah. <laughs> One last question on this note, and then we'll transition. Like, even right now, like, I won the first fight. If you listen to the noise, you listen to the media, you listen to, you know, the social media, oh, you're scared, you're, you're ducking them. Obviously, for a fighter, I know the truth. Right. Like, we've been doing this most of our lives. It's not a scared bone in either one of our, any of our bodies, you know, going into a fight, but how do you deal with that stuff when you hear that noise out there? You know something is different inside. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the noise? I just think about, I'm not turning down any fight ever, but they might be turning down the, uh, the deal. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's on them. Yeah. It's out of my hands. Yeah. Because I'll fight. But will you pay? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right now they only want to come to the table and they, it's like they're hiding Connor from him. You know what I mean? So it's, a, it's an interesting situation. You know? Yeah. We like, you know, but I think the fans want it, the people want it. Maybe yeah. they don't want it. Yeah, and I'm not asking. Lose. And it's still yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm yeah. not asking. Yeah. You know? Now, obviously, we just talked a little bit about UFC 209, Khabib, the weight. Like, you keep hearing these things from, from Dana, and I think he said a little bit out of his camp that he didn't cut the weight the right way. How do you not cut weight the right way for the people listening at home? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm not, you know, I feel bad he went to the hospital and people are, you know, like scared for him, but I'm not that sympathetic, you know, towards mm -hmm. it because this is our job. You know, yeah. we have two, two things, you know, show up and fight and make weight. That's yeah. our job. You got, you know, eight week training camp to get ready and you got eight weeks to diet properly. 
Now, I'm not saying every weight cut's been perfect for me, but, you know, when, I, when I'm serious and I got a lot on the line, <laughs> I'll make weight and it'll be great, you know? And then sometimes if my heart's not in it, maybe I don't cut weight that well. I don't even train that well, and that's happened. It's, it's a long journey, you know? So, you know, you got to be perfect with it. But, but there's a science behind it, and guys are getting bigger at it. They're, yeah. getting, they're getting better at it, you know? And, and uh, you know, Nate can talk. I'm at 55s right now, and I'm, I'm not cutting that yeah. much to get yeah. there. Nate is a, is a big 55er, and, you yeah. know, and, and I've seen him cut weight multiple pl- times, and, you know, and you could probably talk about it, you know, perfecting it, hitting and missing on it, you know? Yeah, obviously you got a lot of height, you know, and, and I'm sure you, like you just said, you, you cut a lot, but, like, where do you want to be the week of the fight? How many pounds out? I try, to, <clears throat> I try to diet farther out and get as close as I can, and then when I go week of the fight, I try to be within six to seven, mm. eight pounds. Yeah. And uh, I want to have an easier week. Yeah. Harder month, easier week, you know? <laughs> Before I let you guys go, I got to ask you about... Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather, the fight that everybody's talking about. Obviously, you have boxing icon Floyd Mayweather taking on the Irish superstar Conor McGregor. Here's the tale of the tape. McGregor with the height and reach advantage. Southpaw versus orthodox matchup. Mayweather has the perfect record, tons of experience. So just how would a fight between these two, Mayweather and McGregor, play out? If Mayweather and McGregor fight with boxing rules in a boxing ring, does McGregor have a shot at all with Floyd Mayweather, or is this just some type of publicity stunt? Uh, I think it is a big publicity stunt, but my take on a boxing match between the two, I think Greg McGregor, I think he's good and he's got, got uh, he's got a good chance to make something happen in two or three rounds. But I think, you think that, so. I think. It, if any anything, two or three rounds, but I think he's got an amateur style where he's only only got to get mm. good movement, good punches for six, six, eight minutes, and I think that that's too amateur for Mayweather. I'm just saying he's got a puncher's chance. <laughs> if anything, yeah, exactly, <laughs> a lucky punch. If anything, <laughs> but as far as skill and technique, like he's got a real, he's got an amateur style, and mm-hmm. like anybody could be good for nine, six, seven minutes, anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And they all have that puncher's chance, but uh, this guy's ready to go round after round, yeah. and uh, he's going he to be a hard person to get a hold of, so yeah. I, I think <laughs> I think it's going to be a rough one. Absolutely. But who knows? You, who knows? That's the thing about combat sports. Yeah. Gil, MMA rules, in an octagon, does Floyd stand his chance at all? Yeah, the same thing. You know, Floyd has a great, you know, puncher's chance. You know, I mean, he has a beautiful straight right. He has a great boxing, of course. If he can hit him with the little gloves, it could be lights out, you know. But uh, it's just different in the cage. You know, um, James Tony fought Randy Couture once. He stepped into the octagon in there. Didn't go too it didn't go too well. <laughs> you know, Randy Couture did something slick. He got real low and just did an ankle pick and took him down. He had nothing to do, you know, had not, nothing to answer for on that point, you know. So if, if I'm Connor, I don't have my ego doesn't step in. I try to lay kick and I try to be very very conservative, almost avoid all striking and try to take you down. And uh, But in the process, if he catches a straight or a hard counterpunch from Floyd in those little gloves, you know, it, it can be lights out, of you course. Problem. Now, this is a, a hypothetical situation, highly hypothetical. If I decided to come into the octagon yeah. for one fight, <laughs> I'm going to ask you both a question. I'll start with you, Gil. What would be the first thing that you would have me work on if I worked in your gym and said, look, my hands are good. I know nothing else. All right, so, I mean, there'd be a few things, you know, but, um, but the first thing I'd be like, okay, you're not going to become a kicker, but we got to have to learn to deal with the kicks. Mm. So I'd be like, okay, Andre, you know, we, you Give don't... Give me a little example. Show okay, so, so, you so know... I'm in my so traditional you're, boxing stance. So you're a traditional boxing stance. Sta- now, your, your lead leg is a little bit more open to these leg kicks, you know, so these guys are trying to step here and they're trying to kick you around mm. here. So if someone were to try to kick me, I'd say, Andre, you got to turn your leg out a little bit and learn to check that kick. So my shin will block. Yeah, so it's mm. a little different stance. So here comes the so wait, kick. Wait, you're saying block with my shin? Exactly. Blocking with your shin. Exactly. Just Bro. like that. So here I come. I'm kicking. You turn your shin out. Oh, man, that hurt my leg, right? Ah. As well as I'd say, okay, Andre, you're going to look for the kick, and you got to do your counter straight right. So guy's going to kick. Boom, he's done right there, you know? So those are a couple things I have you deal with. You can catch the kicks. You can block them. But for me, I had to learn a lesson, getting kicked in the gut, taking it right here, and now I know how to deal with the kicks. But I'm not a kicker, but I can deal with the kicks. Nate, obviously, bro, we've been in a ring together. Mm-hmm. You've come to my world. You've been in a boxing ring. You've got great hands. Uh, if I came to the octagon, and we were fighting, mm. what would be the first thing you would attack if you knew this guy doesn't have, he's not a good kicker, no jujitsu experience, he's just a good boxer? Take down. So if I'm, I'm here, you're not even going to mess with the stand-up. I would, I would probably 
fake like I was going to do, get you going, punching with me, and then when you do, going down low. You do go down for a takedown. So if I were you, I would try to try to work practicing my knee. Mm. Would probably be a good one. That's As you go good. down, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. Exactly. So you can, so you know that now. So now I'm gonna get you punching, mm -hmm. punching with me, and like so we're boxing now, and I get you to throw some punches. I'm gonna shoot. So yeah. you want to bring this knee up, bam, and even faking it sometimes is good mm. because then then I'm like thinking about thinking about taking a shot on you, and I see you going like that. I'm like, mm. well, if I shoot, I'm gonna shoot on that knees and knock me. I mean that thing. Man, so. that's crazy, man. That's I'm what a, I would recommend. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys this, bro. I got a lot of respect for what you guys do, man, because obviously boxing is hard. That's one art we got to learn. You guys got two, three, four arts you got to learn, and this stuff is coming at, at a high rate of speed, man. So respect, bro. I appreciate this, man. Yes, sir. I, I hope this was informative for everybody back home. It's another episode of CSN Fights, and I'm your host, Andre Ward. We'll see you next time.